Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. We're here with another video. And once again, we're going to be asking another vexing question, which is better for raw editing, Affinity Photo or Pixelmator Pro? I've been asked this question a few times and I've asked this question myself. It is confusing because both of these are wildly popular photo editors. So Pixelmator Pro, as you can see here, costs around 40 US dollars and it has 10,000 ratings in the Mac App Store with an average rating of 4.8. Affinity Photo, on the other hand, has a price of around $55. It has 1,000 ratings with an average rating of 4.3. So these are very popular softwares and their price point is very similar. So of course, we can't just look based on price because while both of these softwares support raw editing, they also do a lot of other things like compositing, like Affinity Photo also supports HDR, supports panoramas, and I made videos on all of these. And do check out my channel if you're interested in any of that. But we're going to be focusing on raw editing. I'm going to run through each of these software. And at the very end, I'm going to give my verdict, which one is really better for raw editing. All right, so let's start off with Affinity Photo. So with Affinity Photo, as I've mentioned in my previous videos, to do any raw editing, you would have to go to the develop persona. So the develop persona is indicated by this icon, this highlighted icon at the top. Now you might say, doesn't Affinity Photo also support layers? Isn't Affinity Photo more known for layers? Well, the answer there is, you can edit this photo in layers, but it will not be treated as a raw, meaning you do not have the dynamic range. Okay, so let's just demonstrate it very quickly, just to be clear about this limitation. So here I'm in the develop persona. Let's just make an adjustment here. Right, so that is the adjustment for the develop persona. Right, you can see that it has the entire range of tones, especially when you uh, reduce the highlights. How about if we edit this with layers in the photo persona? So let's go into the photo persona now. Okay, so now it might not be obvious, but now you can see that the icon at the top has changed. And now you can see that there are layers. The layer panel is now available. So now I'm in the layer based editing mode. Let us do the same edit as previously. So I'm going to create an adjustment layer here. Okay. I'm going to do the same adjustment. Look at that. It's not the same. So this is the edit from the develop persona, which treats it as a raw. And this is the edit from the photo persona when we did the same operation. Develop persona, photo persona. Develop persona, photo persona. So I hope you could see that there is a difference, okay? And uh, that is a limitation of Affinity Photo, wherein you have to use this, this develop persona instead of editing the raw file through layers. So now that we understand that we need to edit a raw file in the develop persona to get the benefits of the raw file. Okay, so now we have this night shot. And so let's just do the basic adjustments now. So obviously this, this foreground here is too dark in shadow. And we'd like to bring out a little bit more detail and this building here is a bit overexposed. So again, we're going to use the same tools. Now we cannot use obviously this brightness slider here for a global adjustment because it will blow out the highlights even more. So we, we normally would want to use uh, a shadow adjustment for this. So let's just do that. So in the shadow adjustment, if we go into that, so you can see how nicely the shadows are brought up by affinity, right? You can really see the detail. It has no problem bring up the shadows and then the highlights. But once again, you see the image does lose contrast. We can also adjust the temperature here, by the way, in this interface. And we can adjust, as I say, we can adjust a little bit of the contrast here and the clarity, right? So that's pretty much the edit for Affinity. How about in Pixelmator? So let's just adjust this in Pixelmator. So for Pixelmator, we're gonna adjust the shadows here. So you can see Pixelmator does a less aggressive job of brightening up the dark areas. So it sort of maintains the contrast a little bit better at the expense of brightening up the, the shadow area. So it has a bit more contrast. Then if you reduce the highlights here, you see the highlights are also not as aggressive. It's not really targeting this portion here. It tries to maintain some of the highlights of the image. It is still a very contrasty image, but if you want to adjust the contrast a little bit more, you can actually go to sharpen here and we can increase the radius here. And just decrease, decrease that. Then we can, of course, do the comparison here, like so. 
So this is the affinity edit and this is the pixel meter edit. So the affinity edit, as you can see, you can see the highlights. You can see the detail in the shadow a little bit more and in the highlights. While in affinity, it's not as aggressive, but it sort of maintains maintains the contrast in the image a little bit better. That may or may not be what you want. So it boils down to personal preference. So, so for local adjustments, the good news for Affinity Photo is the developed persona does support local adjustments via what, what you call overlays. So you can click on this overlay here and you can just create this new overlay. And you can watch my video on overlays if you want to know more about how to do that. Okay, so it's a pretty straightforward operation. So you can, of course, just paint over that. Now you can see the brush is pretty fast in this mode. Um, there is no adjustment for opacity as I am aware. So you have to adjust the opacity on the layer itself. Now, as you can see from this image here, let's say I just want to, I'm trying to select here this the rock formation so that I can brighten just this rock formation. You see that this is a situation where you need a very precise selection, okay? So Affinity Photo is good in the sense that it supports edge detection via this edge aware. So let's just do that. Okay. So if you drag through this, you see that it does support edge detection. This. So this one, as you can see, there is a, a difficult portion here. Okay. It's a little bit more tricky because this, this hole here, I don't want to select this portion here. All right. So the main issue I have with this edge detection is it is actually not as accurate as, as Pixel Mater Pro. So you can see in this case, even though I have the, the plus sign here clearly on this rock formation, so this is clearly an edge, you see that it, it is still going past the edge. All right. So I've tested this in great detail because I did, I do like this interface, but I find that the, there, you, as you can see, right, it is still slipping through it. And that is extremely frustrating when you're doing like a complex selection like this, this one. This is already a difficult, a difficult type of selection because of all the irregularities in the edges. All right, so there I've selected the thing. I'll probably speed up this video. And you can see there's a lot of mistakes here and there. So if I go into the basic panel here, and then I adjust the shadows, then you can see that it will be adjusted. Actually for this, okay, let's just use uh, the exposure. So that's one issue. The edge detection is, is very iffy. But uh, another problem with this is once I want to refine this, okay, I want to refine this, meaning I want to make some modifications over this. So I'm just going to click this. So this is the overlay paint tool, right? That's clearly the overlay paint tool. So I'm supposed to paint again. So if I paint again, you see that the red overlay no longer appears. So that's, I think, a bug. It's been there for the longest time since I made the video on the overlay panel. Get around that is just to increase the exposure really high and you can see some of the, the errors in greater detail, right? So there you can paint a little bit more. So you see that I don't have access now to the refine tool for the edges. There is actually a refine tool, but it, it works in the photo persona. I don't have access to be able to select this mask, which I painstakingly did and invert that. There's no such access to that thing as far as I'm aware. Okay, so that, that is some of the limitations. So how about in Pixelmator Pro? So for Pixelmator Pro, of course, we can now take advantage of these uh, so-called color adjustment layers or this adjustment layers, which just came out this year. And that is, of course, a big upgrade. So let's see how this can be applied for this situation. So what we're going to do here is just do the selection first. And uh, we have an option to do the quick selection or the color selection, right? So there's a bunch of options here. You have the quick, the quick selection, color selection, or select subject. So select subject is the one which, uh, which is the most promising because you don't have to do anything. So I'll just click select subject and let the AI try to figure it out. You see, it did a pretty decent job, pretty decent job. Now it's not perfect, but it's pretty decent. So we can, of course, just clean this up a bit and let's just subtract here. Let's go back to the quick selection tool here. So I'm not going to be worried about errors, unlike in Affinity, because I can actually refine the selection later on. So I'm just going to go do this really fast. So I'm just going to add now the adjustment layer. So I just clicked on insert a layer here, color adjustments. 
and you see now the mask has been created all right but I'm pretty sure I made some mistakes so let me inspect it so what I can do is I can right click and refine the mask it's very clear now that I do have some errors okay so let's just fix some of these things all right so in the refine mask here you have now have an option to do quick selections for bigger spots but if for things which are a little bit the more difficult you could use this refine edge brush which is really good this is available as well in affinity but only on their photo persona not on the raw editing persona and so let me just so basically as you can see here with the refine edge brush it will make a decision now for you which ones need to be selected and which ones would not you can see it's pretty does a pretty good job right of keeping those parts which uh, need to be selected and unselecting those parts which do not okay this one is a little bit big so i'm just going to increase the size of this so if i make a mistake here you can always go back to the basic brush then just choose add to selection you can sort of fix that so let's just go back to the refine as you can see just looking at it from a distance you can see it's a much more accurate selection and we, this is a pretty sophisticated selection right here okay there you go so that's selected and then just click apply to that and then you can now do the adjustment okay so i do not actually like their shadow adjustment because it it removes all the contrast so i actually will normally go for the brightness adjustment right there okay that's the brightness adjustment. Now that is not the only benefit. So that in itself is already a big improvement over Affinity's selection. So again, we're talking about a sophisticated, precise selection. It was much easier with Pixelmator Pro and their adjustment layers. This, this new adjustment layer feature is just such a big time saver, just makes everything much more effortless than even the previous version of Pixelmator. Another benefit is because this is in a layer, you can copy this mask. And so what I'm gonna do now is apply this to the apply this to the, the sky right here. Okay? So I'm just gonna copy this. I'm gonna copy this. And then I'll just paste it. And I'm gonna I can invert this now because this is in a layer, right? I can invert colors here. And now if I reduce the brightness of this. You can see how nice that looks, right? Very natural. And again, it's very natural because this is a raw layer. Now, this thing is not correct, right? The C, I didn't want to reduce that, so I can correct that. So again, I'll just refine this. All right, and then I'm just going to add the, I'm just going to choose a basic brush here. Just brush over that and then just apply that. Okay, so that's just a much better looking image. This is the before and that's the after. That is local adjustments in Pixelmator. And of course, all of these local adjustments have access, as I've mentioned, to all these color, color adjustments as well and the like. If I want to just adjust the blue, the blues for the sky, so I can go into this adjustment, right? Just double click on it. I can just go into this HSL panel here the selective color panel and just choose blue and then i'll just reduce the brightness of the blue here so you see it just affects the sky let's talk about some other features now affinity photo does support things which pixelmator pro does not and these are important features to take note of one important feature they have which pixelmator pro does not have is lens correction or lens distortion correction so you can manually correct the distortion of the lens which is really good. And not only correct the distortion of the lens, you could adjust just like in uh, Lightroom or other editing software, you could adjust the, you could adjust the transforms of this. So this one, I normally like to adjust the vertical transform for this type of image here. That's the building here. All right, so for Pixelmator Pro, you can see that there was a distortion correction applied to it. The explanation there is Pixelmator Pro uses the Apple RAW engine and as long as the particular lenses are supported by that engine, the geometric distortion and vignetting should be corrected when opening raw photos in Pixelmator Pro. The main takeaway there is this thing is already corrected for distortion, but if you want to do any other transforms, you can't do it with Pixelmator. Another nice thing about Affinity Photo is it does have very good uh, noise reduction, and I would rely on Affinity Photo more for 
a noise reduction. So that was the comparison now of the raw editing between Pixelmator Pro and Affinity Photo. What is the bottom line really? So what is my takeaway here? Which one is really better? So I think with the new update of Pixelmator Pro 2.4 Odessa, I think that Pixelmator Pro has overtaken Affinity Photo. Pixelmator Pro has zoomed past it for several reasons. Number one, its support for raw layers is already a big advantage that you don't have to move back and forth different personas just to edit a raw file. It's much more intuitive. The second reason is the, the new adjustment layers feature of Pixelmator Pro. As you see, there's no compromise now in terms of adjustments wherein you have the full tonal range in your raw file. You have the full tonal editing range with the adjustment layers of Pixelmator Pro. Affinity does not support raw in its layers. And as you've seen for many types of images, even an image like this one here, this would not edit as well, right? If you're converting this back to some compressed form or you're not treating it as a raw, you're treating it as some sort of a JPEG, this you won't have the dynamic range to recover details in the scene at the same time i would say that in many ways the edits of pixelmator pro is better because it does maintain contrast better the colors do look better in pixelmator pro the bottom line is pixelmator pro is the better software to use for raw editing especially with their latest upgrade so i'll be looking forward to what affinity photo will have in its own updates. And I hope it will have to do with improvements to its raw editing as I've outlined in this video. So I hope you found this video helpful. That was a lot of content and I went into great detail because I know a lot of people are confused about the differences between the two softwares. I want to reiterate again that both Affinity and Pixelmator Pro are softwares I use regularly. They are both excellent softwares, but we have to come up with a winner. And I think uh, the winner really is Pixel Mater Pro in 2022. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, please help the channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing the content to help keep the videos coming. And till the next video, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.